what is it really gonna take to be a successful Etsy seller in 2023? We are out of the COVID phase, the big skyrocketing sales that we saw in 2020 because everyone was sitting at home buying stuff is over. So can you still be successful on Etsy today? And if we can, how are we gonna do it? We're also gonna cover the psychology behind who is gonna win moving forward and really what's the truth about selling on Etsy. Without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back guys, my name is Hannah Gardner. If you're new to the channel, I talk about building brands on Etsy and Shopify. I opened my first brand end of 2019, about seven months before COVID started. And since then I've sold over $2.1 million between my Etsy and my Shopify. I've been documenting that journey all along the way and sharing it back on this channel with you guys. I fundamentally believe having more growth mindset individuals in this world makes the world a better place. So if that is what you're into, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. So let's just get into it right now. Right now, the topic of Etsy is very much like the Amazon frenzy, the drop shipping frenzy, the Shopify frenzy that we saw a couple of years ago. It was just the hottest topic for a while. It was the best way to make money online. And now it's Etsy. Well, why is it Etsy? It's Etsy because Amazon has become very difficult and very higher barrier of entry to get into. Same thing with drop shipping. Drop shipping is really arguably not a thing anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's, it's still a thing, but it's it's not easy by any means, especially with the Facebook and Instagram iOS update. It definitely made marketing way more difficult and expensive. And just as well as Shopify, just running a Shopify brand, those are much more difficult than they used to be. So now the big fad is Etsy. And one, <laughs> Etsy speaks to an audience because it's a much easier platform to work on currently today. Like today, it doesn't even compare to running a Shopify store, what you have to do to keep the engine of a Shopify or an Amazon store running. It's much, much easier. And also, you know, during COVID, <laughs> many people lost their jobs and they're just looking for other ways of making money. So Etsy by default has become a very popular topic, especially with this print on demand topic. Everyone wants to do print on demand and sell digital downloads, which this frenzy alone, this specific frenzy of selling POD is very similar to the hype that came around when drop shipping was around because why? Because the idea that you can sell a product without paying for it until it sells is a really, really great business model. It's a very low barrier of entry. It's a very easy, low monetary risk business model. But what tends to happen when that happens is a lot of competition because the gates start flooding open because people hear, oh, I don't need a $5,000 or $10,000 investment. I can just start with no money. And that's fine. <laughs> don't get me wrong. They're very legit business models. But what happens is the competition becomes very, very high. Now, I don't do print on demand. I don't sell digital downloads. Looking back, I wish I did because it's a really cool model. We make design and hold all of our inventory in my office. And it's not to say that you can't crush it today with those models. There's just some things that you have to understand if you are wanting to get into NC in general or do one of those Etsy models that are like print on demand or selling digital downloads. So what is that psychology. Let's talk about that for a minute. The first thing is having the right perspective, right? Like it is not get rich quick. And I think one of the biggest reasons why people fail is because I don't know if it's because of social media or what the case is, but they think it's easy. Even if it is print on demand where you don't have to have upfront inventory costs, they think that it's free. So you don't have to spend money, what you do. Actually, you should spend more money because you're gonna have to outspend your competitors on marketing. So they think it's free. They think that it's not hard. They think that it's gonna be like something that they can just you know work on one hour a day and they're gonna make seven figures. That is not the case. 
That is not the case when I started, especially not the case today. That's especially not gonna be the case in 2023. So as competition arises, whether you're in POD or not, one thing that you have to understand is competition is not a bad thing. Competition is actually a good thing because when you have competition, especially direct competition, it shows that people actually want what you have to sell. So it's not like you have to worry that like your products aren't gonna sell once you go to market. But what competition forces us to do is build better businesses. So if your competitor that you're aspiring to be like when you first launch your store has a thousand listings, then you should probably go out and try and aim for 2000 listings. Obviously not at your launch, but like your goal is to have more listings than your competitors. We're gonna talk about listings in a second, but the whole point of this is that it's not get rich quick, it's not easy per se, but there is a lot of front, upfront work and there's a lot of learning curve that's involved with starting an Etsy store. Now, I know you might have seen this video where I said I made $945,000 my first calendar year. Yeah, but I had a very intense two year of serial entrepreneurial failures <laughs> before I made that money, right? I had learned so many skills, online marketing, e-commerce space before I made a dollar. So while I did that in one year, I pretty much ate shit for two years before that. So when you're starting a business for the first time, you know, don't be hard on yourself. The winning in the beginning is just having, getting a proof of concept and seeing if someone even wants to buy what you have to sell. You shouldn't even be worrying about profit or making money in that first year. And if you do by default or, you know, you do anyway, then that's just a plus right? It's like your freshman year all over again, especially if you have no background or no business background, especially if you have no business background, you know, be easy on yourself. Let's just talk about Etsy for a second and understanding the psychology of Etsy. So Etsy is very much a horizontal scaling business. So once you basically max out your ad budget allowance, which on Etsy, it's normally a thousand dollars a day, right so all of my brands have a thousand dollar day ad budget which it doesn't spend that obviously some some brands will but once you max that out essentially there's no other way to make more money other than just launching more products so it's a horizontal scaling business this is unlike shopify this is unlike amazon to some extent where if the engine of your business is turning a profit with you spending ten thousand dollars a day on Facebook and Instagram ads, then there's no saying that you can't increase that to $20,000 spending a day, which companies do. Now, Etsy's not that, right? Because they're gonna cap you out $1,000 a day. So that means to make more money, you either need to be making viral videos on TikTok or you need to be scaling horizontally by launching more things. So if you see that your competitors are launching new listings constantly, you need to be launching new kit listings constantly. That doesn't mean you need to be selling new products constantly. That means you should be testing out new product listings, new product variations, new price points, new value propositions, new photography, new keywords, constantly. So how are you gonna stand out in a saturated market? Well, that's exactly how you're gonna stand out. You're gonna look at who's really winning and who's at the top, which you can do that by using tools like Sales Samurai and checking out who is ranking for high search volume keywords. And essentially you can analyze who's at the top for top ranking keywords. And you can see, okay, essentially in this listing, they're getting a crazy amount of views in a really short amount of time. If the listing's less than hundred days old and it's ranked one for getting the most views in Sales Samurai, then obviously that's the listing that you're gonna wanna beat. So what are you gonna do? That means that you need to build a more competitive product, whether it's the product quality, whether it's the price point, whether it's what they're paying versus the bundle that they're getting, all of those things, right? All of that needs to be determined and mapped out and priced out before so that you know that when you launch, you're already competing against the person that's at the top. Wait, again, ways we're gonna do that is by outbeating them in marketing and branding. So having a overall more aesthetic brand vibe than whoever's at the top, having better product features, having better value propositions. So what are they getting versus what they're paying? Is the perceived value higher in your listing versus their listing? Do you have more creative designs or more unique designs than your competitors on the creative side of things? Do you have more videos? Are you outspending? Maybe your competitors that you are competing against aren't spending the most on their ad budget and you're willing to outspend them. 
All of those things are what you're looking for when you're competing. The brands that are really honing in on their customer avatar, really making a brand vibe and messaging and products and color schemes and photography that truly resonates with their specific customer avatar. So overall, those are the brands that are really, really gonna win coming up in the future. I hope you got some value out of this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.